Hey, useless fodder here. So I've had a ton of people ask me how to use the teleport command. And so I thought that I'd put together this quick tutorial on how to do that. And at the same time, I've had a lot of other people ask me how to create new custom spawn points in Team Deathmatch and Free For All. So I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone? We're going to use the teleport command to create spawn points, specified spawn points in your game mode. So using Team Deathmatch and Free For All, you can create whole new game modes that you can actually prevent them from spawning randomly across the map and instead spawning in a particular spot. So let's crack on with it. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a new game mode. I'm going to choose Team Deathmatch, but it doesn't really matter. You can choose Team Deathmatch or Free For All. You just got to make sure that it's one of these two that has the gear icon. Then I'm going to go to map rotation and we're going to choose an interesting map that we can get a spawn point on. So for that, why don't we go ahead and choose Discarded. That's going to be excellent. We're going to use Discarded for our map that we could find a pretty sweet spawn point on. And then we're just going to go through the rest of these things and just leave it uh, as is pretty much. I'm just going to click through it real fast. Of course, I like to choose Battlefield 3. I think that's my favorite of all of them. I'm not going to disable anything. And here we are at the rules editor, our playground. So the first thing we're going to need to do is talk about the teleport command. There's two ways to find it. You can either go to player and go all the way to the bottom and grab teleport, or you can use your trusty search tool and search teleport. To learn about how to use teleport, we're always going to look at the help menu. Teleports the target to a provided valid position. The first element in here is going to be a player. You can tell it's going to be a player because you can see it's got that little person icon with a circle around it. That's the player icon. You'll always notice that players have that icon. Next is this new input type called a vector, which we'll talk about in a second. You can always tell a vector by the little V with the arrow over it. And then the last thing is going to be a number. That's your yaw rotation. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can always tell it's a number because it says one, two, three inside the little circle. So that's what we're going to need to put in here. So first off, Let's go ahead and just grab our event player. Do that by searching player here, event player. Or, of course, that's under event payloads if you want to grab it from there. And we're just going to stick that in there because that's who we're going to be working with. Next, let's talk about vectors. So what a vector is, is a coordinate system somewhere within the world. It is an X, Y, and Z coordinate. I know that because I went here and I found create vector. I right-clicked it and I went to help. And it talked about the first number is the x value, the second number is the y value, and the third number is the z value. That's a vector of a position. Now there are two types of vectors. We're not going to get too deep into this, but there are two types of vectors. There are local vectors that are local to the player, and then there are world vectors, which is what we're going to be using today, which is local to the whole world, meaning it's a spot in the world. If you use a local vector for a player, that means in relation to that player's body or their physical being in the game. We're not going to mess with that today, but just heads up, there are two different kinds. So let's talk about x, y, and z values. I don't know if you remember from geometry, but there's this lovely little graph that shows you x, y, and z. I'm going to go ahead and put it on screen right here. And so the x value and the y value are going to be somewhere on the flat plane of the base of the level, basically. And the z value is going to be how high you are from that flat plane. Usually your z value is somewhere close to zero or one. And then as you climb up things, you'll go higher than that. But it's not always the way it is. You just need to have all three of those values to know where you're going to teleport. So when you're going to teleport a player, you're going to go ahead and put the create vector in here. What's going to do is create a new data type that's going to be taking these x, y, and z values that are literal numbers you're going to put in here. It's going to create the vector data type to then put into this teleport command. Why they did it this way, I don't really know, but that's just how it is. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a literal and we're going to grab the numbers. And we're just going to put, like they said in here, three, copy and paste, control C, control V for paste five, there we go, control C, control V for paste, and then six. So what this would do is it would send you to the X value of three, the Y value of five, and the Z value of six. But right now it wouldn't work because you have to have this. If we go back to our help menu, see how it says number yaw rotation? If this was optional, it would say optional right here. It would be in parentheses to say optional. It's not optional, so we have to put something in there. I think this is where most people are getting stuff stuff about. What this value is, is a rotational value between zero and 359 degrees. Of course, 369 degrees being zero again, right? So straightforward in the map coordinate system would be zero. Turning to the right, 90 degrees would turn you to about the three o'clock position on a clock. 180, of course, would be six o'clock position or turn you straight around. And 270, of course, would be your nine o'clock position and then going back to zero. This is something that I think generally you're not going to be concerned about, but this is does have to be in the teleport. If you want your players to be aiming directly towards something, then you're going to have to assign this value that aims towards that somewhere on the 360 degree rotational plane. So that's our teleport command. If I put this in here, I'm going to send my player to three, five, six on the grid, and they're gonna be facing towards zero. But where the heck is three, five, six? Well, 
That's where we're going to put together a little command. It's going to help you figure out where on your map you want to teleport somebody to. This is kind of an aside, but I think it's going to help you visualize exactly what these commands are actually doing. So definitely stick with it all the way through the end so that we can get there and we can use this teleport command correctly. And uh, I'm not going to have to answer a million questions in the comments. <laughs> so to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a subroutine. I'm going to create a whole video on subroutines later. But for now, just think of subroutines as little tiny rules that you choose when they go off rather than it being a particular event. So this subroutine I created get location that was under subroutines create subroutine. I'm also going to grab this little block and put it in here for my rule but we'll get back to that here in a minute. For this subroutine we're going to have it run on true so that means we're going to have to grab condition true right okay so this is always going to run every time the subroutine gets run here in the rule it's going to do this because the condition is always true and then we are going to go over here and we're going to get a control action called while. Now I'm going to do a whole video on loops, so definitely make sure to check my channel for that video. But we're just going to quickly go through a while loop basically will continuously run top to bottom and then back to top, bottom, and then back to top to bottom until this particular whatever condition you put in here becomes false. So as long as this condition is true, it will continuously run within this. We want that because what we're going to do is create a little display at the top right of your screen that basically shows exactly where we are on the world plane. And so to do that, we're going to go up here, we're going to search display custom message, okay, right, because that's going to create a message. And then we have to set what this message type. If we go to our help here, you can see that you have to put a message in here and then you have to decide what your message type is, right? So it's kind of a convoluted system, but you always have to make this first one. You can see it's got a little speaking bubble in there. This first one always has to be message. So we're gonna put that in there. This is gonna be a pretty hefty command by the time we're done, by the way. And then we're gonna leave this for right now. We're gonna go over to this next one. We're gonna search custom custom message slot, okay? What that means is there are different slots to where you can put your message. We're gonna put our message in the header text. That's gonna be on the top right. It's gonna have a little bit of a background to it. And it's gonna be very readable up there. So that's why we're using that one. And then this next one's going to be a number. If we go back to our help, this is gonna be how many seconds it's going to display that particular message. Now you can put a negative one to make it display all the time. We don't wanna do that because we're gonna be refreshing this command over and over again. So we're gonna make it last for a very short amount of time. So we're going to go to our literals, grab this, put it in there. We're going to make it last for half a second. And then we want that to run for copying and pasting our event player, right? The person that kicked off whatever started the subroutine. I know it's kind of a little bit confusing if you haven't been through the subroutine video. Whatever rule starts the subroutine will inherit its event player if it has one. And we're going to set that up here in a second. But lastly, let's talk about our actual message. This message is what's going to be no kidding displayed in that header text. And so the message has three slots. The first slot is always going to be what your message is going to be. So we're going to grab a literal here, okay? And we're going to type just like this. Just follow along x for your x value. I like to put a colon so it looks fancy. Space. And then we're going to do open bracket, close bracket. That's right above your enter key if you're on a US standard keyboard. If you're not a US standard keyboard, uh, just look around. I don't know where it is for you, sorry. What those brackets are going to mean is every time you put a bracket in here, it's going to be representative of these next values that we're gonna give it. So this is our first value. Whatever I put this bracket is going to be for right here. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna go space Y colon open close brackets and then space Z colon open close brackets. So now we've got three of these values and now we have to have one, two, three, one, two, three extra values that we're gonna read into it. Basically what it'll do is it'll display this message and every time it sees this open and close bracket, it'll go to whatever value is in here to put in there. Now I could just put a literal, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the actual no kidding position for our player. And once again, it's kind of a convoluted way to do that, but what we have to do is we have to go to player state vector so I search player and I'm just going to scroll down until I find it. Player state vector right here, okay? You can also search vector. There's far fewer of that. Player state vector. We don't want the linear ve velocity. That would tell us which direction they're going in. And I don't want that. What I want is the position. That's going to give our position value. Now, going to our help. This is important. The output here is a player state vector item. Remember we talked about that data type that we created here with a create vector? That's what it's going to output. I cannot put that data type into here. It's looking for a letter, a number, or a player. If it was looking for a vector, it would have this, right? It'd have this little V. So what that means is that we need to get the components of this, the X, Y, and Z components of this player state vector and read them in as the X, Y, and Z. This is gonna take a lot of copying and pasting. We're gonna get there. So what we're gonna do is we have to get this state. There's a get player state. 
right here, okay? The reason why we have to do this is because if I just put player state vector, it doesn't know which player I'm talking about. So I'm gonna get this value for a player. See this little player icon again? We're gonna go ahead and grab event player, control C, control V, of course, to copy. And we're gonna put it in there. So now it's getting the vector value of this player, but we have to break out the X, Y, and Z values of this player state vector. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna search get X, or you could just search X, there's only a few here get x component. It's going to take in a vector, which is this vector item we talked about, and it's going to give us just the x component of it, which is perfect, because that's what we want for our first one, right? So we're going to take the get player state, and we're just going to go ahead and toss it right in there, right? Now we have this nice beefy get x component of the player state of the event player player state vector position, okay? It has to look exactly like this, otherwise you will not get the x component. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab it and just place it right here. Now, when my message runs, it's going to hit say X and it's going to go to this first bracket and it's going to get the X component of this and feed it right in there. I think that that makes sense, right? So then we're going to do this a few more times, right? We're going to go get Y component, okay? It's going to go in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this get player state, copy, paste, control C, control V, put it right in there, okay? So now, now it's going to feed our X and our Y, but we still have the Z. So get Z component, put it in there, right? That's our height value. Get player state, control C, control V, put it in there. Okay, this is a beefy, beefy command. But let's just break it down. Display custom message. Okay, we're going to display a custom message. To get the message format, we have to use the message command here. Within the message command is, what is it literally going to say? But inside the literal, it's going to have these little brackets. They're going to grab from the next three places, right? Okay, it's going to display in this slot, the header text. I could change it to somewhere else, but it's gonna display in the header text, okay? For half a second for just the event player. That's all we care about because it's just us on the map right now. So that is inside my while loop. It's going to do that forever within our while loop while this is true. Let's get something that's going to do it. I could put true in here, but the problem is I'm gonna do this uh, on player deployed just because I think it's the easiest way to do it. If I did that, then every time I deploy, let's say I lag out and fall off a building, not that that ever happens, and I have to deploy again, then this will keep running forever. And every time I deploy, this subroutine will continuously run. And if I have a bunch of players and they're all running the subroutine over and over again, every time they deploy, they make a new copy, it's gonna lag out your server, your server's gonna crash. So instead, we're gonna check if the player's alive. Well, how are we gonna get the state of the player? I don't know, maybe get player state? Yeah, I knew you guessed it. So we're gonna get the player state, and then we're going to check if a player is alive. So we don't want the vector, we wanna get player state, right? And it's gonna be a bool, because it's gonna be true or false, right? Player state bool is alive. So we're gonna get player state, event player, player state bool is alive. What that means is every time this while loop goes to start again, it's going to check is the player alive? If they are alive, keep running this while loop. If they are not alive, it's going to return false and we'll leave the while loop, right? And that's, of course, going to be for event players. That's all we care about. Now, there's one last thing that's missing from the subroutine before we move on. If you attempt to run a while block and it does not utilize a wait block at the beginning or the end of the iteration, it will not work. It will fail. It says right here, always check the help. So, easy peasy. We're going to grab a wait right here and we're going to put it at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and grab a literal, copy paste, and in here, we're gonna put it for 0.2 seconds. It's just every every 0.2 seconds, it's gonna run this while loop. It's going to do this, wait for 0.2 seconds, and then do this again, okay? You can fine tune this if you need to, if this is something you wanna run and you want to update. It's a little bit glitchy at 0.2, but it works for our purposes right here. So there we are, we have our get location subroutine. Now I need to run the get location subroutine anytime somebody deploys. So we're gonna start message here. I'm just doing this to make it easy for me. And on condition, true. Every time a player deploys, it's going to do that. And then it's going to run the get location. Remember I said the subroutine is like a rule that you run on an event that you choose? Well, that's what we're doing. If a player deploys, the condition says it's true, so it's going to run every time. We're going to run the get location subroutine. Zoop right over here. Get location. It's going to run every time here. And it's going to start this while loop while the player is alive continuously run this display custom message. If the player dies, it will go to the end and this subroutine will be finished. But then the player will deploy again, it will start a new get location and yada, yada, yada. And it will continue all the way through. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to call this test player teleporter. And we're just gonna put a bunch for the description. We're gonna click create. And then we're gonna go into Battlefield 2042. We're gonna host this on the portal and I'll show you what it looks like in game.
Okay, so here we are, we're dropping in. You can see that in the top right corner, we've got our X, Y, and Z coordinates now updating. That's gonna be important for us when we wanna teleport our guys to a particular spot. We need that vector, they call it, the X, Y, Z coordinates. So let's find a spot that uh, is gonna work for us to teleport ourselves to. That way we know that our spawn point is actually working. So I'm gonna go, can we get up there? Let's get up there. Okay, so here we are. On top of this big red thing, it's a good way to tell if our spawn is working because we're never going to spawn up here accidentally. So our spawn point, we're going to set right here. So to get, uh, sorry, I'm sliding around a little bit. The server's a little laggy. So to get our spawn point, we're going to use those numbers exactly right there. And the way we're going to get them is we're going to either hit Alt Print Screen um, or if you're using Steam, the default screenshot is F12 and a little thing should pop up in the bottom right, make a little sound, it's like boing. And when you do that, you can go ahead and grab that off of Steam. If you did the alt print screen method, you can go ahead and paste that in paint and that will just save those numbers. Or of course, you just grab a notepad and write them down. Okay, so here we are back at our rules editor. Now that we have on our little screenshot, which I'm gonna go ahead and pull on the screen right now, we have our X, Y, and Z values, okay? So that's like all we need from this is these X, Y, and Z values to actually teleport our player. If we wanna make a custom spawn point, here's the magic. Here, are you ready? Are you ready for the super, super complicated way to do that? On player deployed, actions, teleport, and then we enter the values that we got. So if I have this, I'm gonna put it on a different screen. It was negative 778.8366. That's very exact. We're gonna be exactly on 122.6643. This is our Y value. And then of course, 21.193163 is our Z value. I'm just gonna leave this straight for a zero. You could turn the player however you want. Now, every time a player deploys, they will teleport exactly that position. That is their spawn point. We have created a vector that is exactly the point that we were at on top of that red spot. And of course, we're gonna just keep running get locations so we can verify that we did in fact end up at the right spot. Now, let's go ahead and see if that works. Make sure to save it and then go ahead into the editor. Okay, so here we are back in. I've set my spawn point. So when I deploy, it should send me directly to that spawn point. Let's check it out. So deploy and here I am back on top of that red thing, exactly where I wanted to be just like I said you would. So what you can do is you can actually apply that same thing to every player on a particular team. You can use a if statement or a conditional thing on their deployment to say, if you're on a certain team, go to X spawn point over there. If you're on a different team, you go to X spawn point over here and you've just created custom, oh, oh, don't mind that good old Battlefield portal servers. You just created custom spawn points. And now that you've created custom spawn points, guess what you could do? You use a large map like this and you can now create wave-based modes, you can create round-based modes, or you can even create something where it's like capture a point and it moves everything back, you can attack, defend. You could even do that because you can place different spawn points depending upon what stage of the game they're in. Now, the sky's the limit for this. I had a lot of people who wanted me to teach them how to use the teleport command and oh my goodness gracious, the teleport command is just use Battlefield Portal. And so they wanted me to teach them the teleport command. That's how you got it. So if you want to teleport your players, you now know how to create a vector, how to teleport them. And of course, if you want to create spawn points, then you can create spawn points just the same way I showed you. So that's uh, just about this video wrapped up. If you found it was very helpful, I ask that you do click that like button because the like button does help a lot to get this video in front of more people, gets it in the algorithm, helps me out, of course, but also helps more people to create great modes here in Battlefield Portal. If you want me to teach you something new or some other advanced tutorial, definitely let me know down in the comments what it is that you need help with. And uh, I try to help in the comments if I can. And if enough people ask for it, I like to make a video on it. Thanks. And of course, check out this other video that the YouTube algorithm that you're going to like. Use this fodder, out.